this time 40 years ago. It starts in my mind. When H5, Joe McDonald's wing, and Gina McCormick, who looked after the Cruella home, which is a small radio set and smuggled in, shut it across. First, Yasui Bass, Joe died. And then I could just hear the pipes rattling as the word went up and down from cell to cell for Sassu Bass. The wing went very, very quiet. The lads obviously were alone with their thoughts about Joe. How he had been a rock for over four years of protesting. How he had stood tall and endured the worst excesses the prison administration could throw at him. I mean, you, Joe, was totally committed, and as Bobby Sands had said to Bick when he heard that he was going to replace him on the hunger strike, that Joe MacDonald would never let you down. And that's where the words were coming down from Joe when he was in the prison hospital. Tell the lads, I'm not going to let them down. I was shocked because, foolishly, I had some hopes that maybe there could be a breakthrough. The four lads had already died, but now the Brits were facing a conveyor belt of hunger strikers, and I thought maybe they could concede our demands. Of course, the thing was, it was much more than our demands. It was an epic battle which the Brits engineered themselves because they thought the men and women in Long Cash and Armagh with a soft underbelly of the Republican movement and if they could break them, they could break the spirit of the Republican movement. And this was never going to happen. Joe and the rest of the lads and all those involved in the protest were never going to allow the Republican movement to be criminalised. So it became a head to head with the hunger strikers and the British government in particular Thatcher. The British government had all the powers at their disposal, but the lads on hunger strike had their political beliefs, had their commitment, and as Bobby Sands said, that thought that says, I'm right. And of course they won through in the end. We got all our concessions, we got all our demands, but as I said, it was much, much more than that. And through their heroic sacrifice, and indeed all the sacrifices these men and women resting here today made, they brought the struggle forward. They changed the course of Irish history. And we're now in a position today where a hundred years on, this little sectarian statelet is teetering on collapse. And we have front and centre in the political discourse talk of Irish unity and it was these men and women inspired people they awakened the latent nationalism in, in, in the people and nationalism and republicanism found its voice and were assertive demanding their rights and now they are striving for unification and it's only going one direction and it's thanks to the ten lads and many others who made sacrifices and who rest here today.